only a thousand nautical miles to go. So crazy. It's hard to say um, how long that's going to take me because I've been going everywhere from three knots to six knots since I don't have a spinnaker. When the wind gets light, I go super slow. But as a celebration, I have opened up my one and only can of my favorite. I like to drink, oh fuck, well I like to pour the juice of them on the floor and then I also like to drink the juice and eat the mandarin. So celebration today. What? what? Brief interruption. Welcome to the Wind Be Sailing Sailing Channel. This episode is one of a series of um, ocean crossing videos of my solo sail from Panama to the Marquesas. Jump back to episode 45, I think, if you haven't seen the others and want to catch my trip from the beginning. And if you don't care, it doesn't matter, you can just watch this one too. It's exciting because I finally make it to land. Spoiler alert! Uh, yeah, if you want to see where I am in real time, I'm in the two modus right now, which are really beautiful. You can check out my Instagram, at Boat Lizard, and see videos and photos of things that I'm doing here. Beautiful snorkeling, diving, etc. Otherwise, enjoy the video. It's a beautiful sunrise. There has been no wind all night long, and my sails have been flogging, um, which has been really tiring for me because I have to hand steer. But the wind is finally starting to kick in, and my head sails up again. It's staying relatively full. I've been out in the cockpit since about four this morning because the wind died at around sunset, and I stayed up hand steering. And then I was able to get some sleep last night, but at four, everything went to hell. So I've just been hanging out in the cockpit, watching the sunrise. Uh, drinking tea and eating cheese quesadillas and now it's beautiful I think it's gonna be a really nice day hoping to get some Sun to charge my batteries something that I've learned on this trip is that my little solar panels are well so 40 watts very tiny hand for scale um, they're fine for everyday use but if I put my AIS VHF on at night uh, all night long, I have to have a really full sunny charge them back up again. So even a day where it's half cloudy isn't enough to get them where they need to be. Actually, this so. is probably the best one I've had in the past 12 hours, unfortunately. Or fortunately, I guess. Fortunately for me right now. Unfortunately for trying to get anywhere, Holly. <laughs> deck checks just to make sure everything is cool and usually that involves um, throwing whatever fish or other life has come onto my deck in the night overboard. So today we have squid. Ooh, and a fish. Me. This is the tiniest like, fish ever. And just making sure all is cool in boat world. All is cool with the sail, sort of. One day maybe the wind will fill it in all the way. Ooh, here's another flying fish. Little guys today. And that is a that. One in the morning, 
I just went to put a double wreath in my mane because a nasty squall hit and one of the lines that's on the sails you have the the luff which is Okay, I'm pausing this program to draw you guys a picture. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm bringing this explanation to you from a much less sleep deprived and at sea holly. So basically what I was trying to explain was here's the sail. Here's the main sail. This is the mast here. And the boom is here. And then these are the three reef points so that if you need to make your sail smaller, you attach a hook that's here between the mast and the boom and you hook it on and it pulls everything down. There's also lines on this side. Now for each reef point in my sail, it has these little lines that hang out on either side of the main. And that's so that if you picture this coming down to the boom, you can tie these lines under the boom to each other and kind of hold in all the fluff of the sail. I never use them because one, I'm lazy. Two, if you forget to untie them and go to raise your main, you can tear the main. Three, I'm lazy. <laughs> all right, back to at sea holly. If you look out from the left you'll see these lines hanging down and those are to tie the bag of the sail up if you want. I never use them. One of those had gotten wrapped around the bottom spreaders and I wasn't able to get the sail down so I was trying to work on figuring out how to untangle that, taking the sail up and down and changing course when the line to the topping lift parted which means that the back of the boom is no longer supported so I was sitting on the lifelines and the first thing you do in the topping lift parts is take the sail down, which I couldn't do because the thing was stuck. Anyway, uh, time is now of the essence because it's gusting and I don't want to hurt the gooseneck. So I ended up having to free climb to the first set of spreaders to untangle the little rope. And it turns out it's a good thing I did because it tied a knot around itself. Oh, there's my alarm to check my course. Unfortunately, it's wire. Fortunately, it broke right near the bottom. So I'm gonna try to see if I can tie a rolling hitch of the thinnest line that's the strongest. I don't have any dynema, sadly. And then uh, to keep a more confusing tired holly, I'm gonna draw you guys another picture of what I was talking about. So what I was able to do um, before the video was climb up to the spreaders uh, untie the line that was stuck, you guys remember this line, stuck on the spreaders and get the sail down, but then I had to get the topping lift fixed. So here we go, <laughs> very to scale drawing of my boat. It's not, I promise my boat doesn't look that weird. So we have the mast, the boom, and then the connection between the boom and the mast is just this delicate little flower of a piece of metal. And so you have a topping lift, it's a rope or wire that runs from the top of the mast to oops you can't even see to the end of the boom and when the sail is on you loosen the topping lift so that the sail is being pulled flat by the boom but when there's no sail it's important that you have the topping lift on to keep the boom up so what happened is that the topping lift which was wire parted here ah, and the boom fell down onto the lifelines and the topping lift was flying around so my problem that I had to do because this was wire, but I didn't have any wire or crimping tools to fix anything. So I had to somehow tie a piece of line to the wire so that I could then tie it to the boom. Um, a rolling hitch. This is how you tie a rolling hitch. First, you want to think about the direction of the tension that's going to be on your line. So let's pretend I'm tying a hammock to a shroud. The tension is going down, right? So then you want to tie it against the tension. So it's really easy. You just go like this. And I am hanging on it right now with all my weight and it's not going anywhere. So that is what I was trying for with my topping lift. Basically as the line tightens it cinches itself tighter. It's one of my favorite hitches. Actually it's my favorite hitch. But the goal was to tie a rolling hitch onto the wire with a piece of rope so that I could tie it onto the boom. But the thing with a rolling hitch is that it has to have tension on it otherwise it'll just come undone. So what I was thinking I would do is tie the rolling hitch and then take electrical tape and tape over the knot to hold it all together because it's basically just loops around a piece of rope and if there's no pulling down on the loops they just come off. So it was a way to keep everything together even when it was slack when the sail was up. And we'll see what happens. Okay, I'm really tired. Um, 
and this is not how I was expecting to spend my night. And okay, okay, so I'm up at Mast right now. You can see how great my headlamp is. This is the part that I'm gonna try to repair up here because it's the easiest place to work on this and then I'll try to lead it back. I'm not sure how tangled up it is with the sail and the rig and stuff, um, but we're gonna see. I'm hoping I can sit down and do this because it's really rolly and I don't think I can use both hands and stand on my feet at the same time. Oh, this is really beautiful. This is how bright the moon is right now. Crazy, right? Wow. Yeah, so I'm uh, wing and wing. I have my working jib up on the whisker pole. There's the troublesome mane. And here is the beautiful moon cloud combination. Okay, I've taken off the hopping lift from the boom and you can see where the problem lies. So, I've already had this break once on this trip, at the very beginning, probably day three it parted. Um, so this is where it attaches to the boom, but this connection broke, so I fixed it with this line, which has been doing great. So what I'm going to do is take this line off, because I think it's a good size, and tie the rolling hitch with this guy. Now I'm just hoping that it's long enough and uh, try to do the fix here and keep this for the hall of shame. Okay, here's the repair. You wow. really can't see anything, can you? Neither can I. I was able to sit on the dinghy and let's see. Woo, it's wiggly out here. Um, this stuff is really nasty to work with because the wire rope is full of burrs. We might have to wait for the daytime, but anyway, it looks like a wire connected to a rope with a bunch of uh, electrical tape on a giant knot in the middle. So now we're going to take this back to the end of the boom and oh there we go. Maybe? No? Okay. And try to uh, see if I can reattach. Okay. okay. Topping lift is reattached. I'm going to show you guys in the morning. Okay. Now it's time and I'm going to show you my fix out. Okay. It's not that pretty to look at. <laughs> There's a giant knot, so what I did is I tied a knot in the bottom of the wire and then I tied a rolling hitch from this rope onto the wire and then just covered the shit out of it with duct tape, or sorry, with electrical tape. And there we have it. It held when I was redoing the reef, so that's a good sign. Waves are picking up a little bit, wind is picking up a little bit airing out my sheets while I have some nice weather and wing and wing with big heady up. Everything is really happy today. So I have less than 400 miles to go and the wind has totally died and I don't have a spinnaker or any light wind sails so I'm just going two to three knots making 80 mile days and zenning on not getting frustrated. <laughs> Um, so today it was actually so flat calm. Do you want to hear one of my least favorite sounds in the world? Wait for it. There we go. Flogging of the sails. I was able to set things down on the counter and have them not get knocked over, which is crazy. I've been doing a bunch of cleaning of my boat and I was, so I was shaking a dish rag out over the water very domestically, you know. And I saw this huge shark jump three times out of the water. Splash, splash, splash. At first I thought it was a whale, but it was totally a shark, and it was by itself. And then it just took off at probably 15 or 20 knots, just zoomed past my boat like, fuck you, I'm a shark. Ah, so cool. And the thing is that I had been considering, um, I'd been considering swimming around my boat to clean some of the goosenecks off and to clean the scum off from around the edges. Every time I think about doing that, I see a shark, so I think it's a sign to not get in the water. <laughs> There's a shark swimming behind my boat. I don't, I don't know if you can see it through the water, but it's kind of just following in my slipstream and skating back and forth. Now it's right behind the boat. It's not that big. It's probably only four or five feet, I would say. Crazy place! First sight of land! Not the one I'm going to, it's Fatuhuku, which is a little rock. I'm about 40 miles away from it, and you definitely cannot see it through the phone, but it is on the horizon. 
Oh man, this is so exciting. So I'm getting in tomorrow morning, really stoked. The wind totally died for about three days and I had slack sails and life was not so great. Uh, it will have taken me a week to get 500 miles, but so be it. It's been a slow trip and it will continue to be slow till the end. But now I'm starting to see different land. I'm gonna pass three islands before I get to the one where you clear in. Really stoked to be able to see bigger islands up close. That'll be tomorrow morning. I don't even think I'm gonna be able to sleep tonight. I'm so excited. This is incredible. I'm 10 miles away from the island, so it's been one of the worst nights that I've had all trip as far as squalls. They would be like crazy strong and they would push me at seven knots and then the squall would end and there would be no wind and I'd be going two and a half knots and the next squall would kick in. And they all had rain in them, which I haven't really had all trip. But um, right around sunrise I got my last big squall and then they're all blowing away and finally Nukahiva is being uncovered from the squall clouds so I'm at last able to see land even though I've been with inside of land for probably the past 20 hours. First it was nighttime, then it was cloudy. So here it is. It's so cool, it's so beautiful, and I'm so excited. There's birds everywhere, and the wind is beautiful and strong, and the waves aren't too big, and I'm just cruising at five or six knots, which for my little boat, it's a great speed. <laughs> I just had my first cup of coffee in 41 days. That's how long I've been at sea. I left Panama 41 days ago and I'm finally seeing land. It's crazy. I should be getting in in a couple hours, but I am. Ah, made it in! Stay tuned in the next couple of weeks for cool Marcasian action like this. watching this week's video. I put up new videos every two weeks on Mondays to hopefully make Mondays slightly nicer for everybody. Um, so if you want to see where I am in current time, as I mentioned in the beginning of my video, check out my Instagram at BoatLizard and you can see real time, sorry it's getting windy, um, real time footage of where I am now in French Polynesia. Right now I'm in the Tumorus. Very beautiful. Thank you to all of my patrons who continue to support me on Patreon. You guys make what I'm doing possible and brighten my day. Thank you guys for all of your lovely comments. I love reading them and responding whenever I have cell or Wi-Fi, which sometimes happens and sometimes doesn't out here. You never know. Um, I am committed to keeping these videos ad-free for you guys so that you can just enjoy something without having to watch a bunch of ads for shit you don't need. <laughs> so I hope that you appreciate that, or if you don't, maybe you don't notice, and that's cool too, because then it's just like this natural flow, man, you know what I mean? Very cool. Okay, I think that's everything. I'm rambling. I'll see you guys in two weeks.